Published by Sega and released in 1993, this series has five main sequels and a handful of spin-offs. This franchise is recognized as being the first in 3D fighting games. This is Virtua Fighter. Oh, nice. Welcome to Press Start to Join, a proud member of the Alberta Podcast Network powered by ATB. This is episode 185, and I'm Alan. I'm Josh. Today, I'm taking you through the history of the Virtua Fighter franchise. So, Virtua Fighter is known for being a game that helped popularize 3D polygonal graphics. Oh, yeah? Guinness World Records Gamers Edition 2008 gave Virtua mm -hmm. Fighter awards for first polygon-based fighting game, first 3D fighting game, and first fighting game for a 32-bit console. Not really stuff that they can lose. <laughs> I mean, aren't the first two kind of like one and the same? You're not going to use polygons in a 2D environment. Yeah. It, that is weird that they spread it out. Guinness, what are yeah. you, drunk? <laughs> <laughs> the 2008 Gamers Edition? What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, some of the Sony Computer Entertainment staff involved in the creation of the original PlayStation video game console credit Virtua Fighter as an inspiration for the PlayStation's 3D graphics hardware. Cool. According to Sony Computer Entertainment's Shigeo Maruyama, the PlayStation was originally being considered as a 2D-focused hardware, and it wasn't oh, until no. the release of Virtua Fighter that they decided to design the PlayStation as a 3D-focused hardware. Thank God for that. It would have just been completely left by the wayside by the N64. Oh, completely. Even though the 64 is great. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I mean, but it, it's better because it had competition. Like, mm -hmm. you don't get good stuff from one person pulling ahead. It has to be, like, at least two people fighting over the market. Mm. Uh, Toby Guard also cited Virtua Fighter as an influence on the use of polygonal characters in Tomb Raider and the creation of Laura Croft. Oh, neat. John Romero uh, it also cited Virtua Fighter as a major influence on the creation of the first-person shooter Quake. So, this game really set up a lot of people to do some great things. No kidding. So, the gameplay is what you would expect from an arcade fighting game. Two fighters face each other, they fight each other until one is knocked out of the ring, health reduced to zero, or the time runs out, then the round ends. And then it's just a best two out of three for a win, and if there's a double knockout, there's a fourth round. But the stage is much smaller, and it only takes one hit to knock out an opponent. Ooh, sudden death, cool. Yeah. The controls have a three-button configuration. You have your movement on a joystick or D-pad, and then you have punch, kick, and block as your three buttons. Hmm. And then with timing, position, and combinations, you can perform special moves for each character. Nice. That's pretty standard. So the main series, the first Virtua Fighter, hit arcades October 1993. It featured eight playable characters and a story, because all games in the 90s needed a story, whether or not it's relevant to the gameplay. <laughs> Any idea what Virtua Fighter's story would be, Alan? Oh, I'm guessing some kind of revenge of a plucky young youth uh, against a large evil? Oh, actually, no. Oh, well, whoops. So. As per the game's, like, uh, title crawl, once in the Showa period, the defunct Japanese army intended to approach Henry Pu Yi, the last emperor of the Qing dynasty, in their effort to take advantages. However, they were defeated by imperial guards who utilized the martial art called Haikyokuden. During World mm. War II, the Japanese army researched the mis mysteries of Hyakuken, and created super soldiers developing in the martial art. Approximately half a century has passed since then. The ultimate world fighting tournament is about to start and all kinds of fighters from around the world engage to determine who's the world's best. Behind the tournament, however, there exists an intrigue designed by a sinister syndicate. So, wow. <laughs> What? How? How would you think I would guess that? I know. I love how it goes to like ancient Japan and China. Yeah, and it's just like making up some words, and it's like, yeah, this ancient martial art that the military something something tournament something. Yeah, it's great. Plucky. That's usually like a, a good place to go when it comes to a very shonen <laughs> game. 
No kidding, an earnest youth. <laughs> so the game was made using hardware that was developed by the aerospace technology firm Lockheed Martin. Yes, the one that huh. makes advanced technologies, information security, aerospace, and defense with Sega. So, wow. Crazy. Neat. Yeah. Uh, they dubbed this technology Model 1. Oh. According to Sega of Japan's publicity manager, Kurokawa, he said, we deliberately didn't publicize all the fighting moves at the same time but instead revealed them to gamers one at a time by the means of Japanese video game press. So they kind of leaked out all the special moves if you read all the trades, so that's kind of cool. Oh, yeah. So when it came to the home market, because it hit arcades first, it was mm -hmm. a launch title for the Sega Saturn, and in North America bundles, it was actually included. Oh, cool. A version for the Sega 32X was also developed, which happens to be my first experience with this franchise, and nice. I think only. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've literally never played it. Yeah, I remember it on the Sega 32X, which is, uh, it looks like a mushroom you put in top of a Sega Genesis. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, the reviews for the Saturn version were much higher compared to the 32X port where the Saturn averaged a high 90, the 32X had about 60%. Oh, no. So, in 1995, they re-released it and called it Virtua Fighter Remix, had higher Ooh. poly models, texture mapping, and some gameplay changes, and all Crazy. Sega... Yeah. All Sega Saturn owners in the United States received a free copy in the mail. Oh, nice. An arcade version was also released on cabinets that were based on Sega Saturn technology and they called it STV. Mm. <laughs> uh, then they later ported it to Windows as Virtua Fighter PC. Huh, neat. And as a little skip ahead in 2003, though they released Virtua Fighter 4 on PS2. Mm -hmm. The release then they released a remake called Virtua Fighter 10th Anniversary Edition exclusively for PS2. The music stages all had low poly visual style. <laughs> and the character roster, animations, mechanics, movesets were taken from Virtua Fighter 4. So it was a tighter game in classic, like, skin. Okay, that's kind of cool. In Japan, they included it as part of a box set called Virtua Fighter 10th Anniversary Memory of a Decade. And uh, you got a DVD with it. Mm. In North America, it just came with your home version of Virtua Fighter 4 Evolution, which is like the upgrade of it. Gotcha. And in Europe, it was only available as a promotional item and never sold in retail. Huh, well that kind of sucks for that market. Yeah, Europe got shafted. Nineteen ninety four, the sequel, Virtua Fighter 2, came to arcades. It was known for its breakthrough graphics, as it used Sega's Model 2 arcade hardware to run the game at 60 frames per second at high resolution with no slowdown. Nice, I love those frames. In 1994. So, by comparison, Virtua Fighter 1 ran at 30 frames per second. Yeah, standard TV. Mm -hmm. It introduced the use of texture mapped 3D characters and actually used motion capture technology. Nice. The Saturn version, which released in 1995, was also well received for its graphics and gameplay. The combat is nearly the same, with movement which is just punch, kick, and block. Virtua Fighter 2 massively expanded on the number and variety of attacks possessed by each character, including the oh, addition yeah? of counter attacks and the ability to, to prevent throws with well timed button presses. Mm. So the strategy went way up. No kidding. And at the beginning of 1995, Sega's AM2 Saturn Division, that's like the comp the uh, the division name, like Team Fox, mm -hmm. uh, was split into three sub-departments, which is never good. <laughs> no kidding. Uh, each one was charged with porting a different arcade game to the Saturn. Virtua Fighter 2, Virtua Cop, and Daytona USA. <laughs> So, due to unexpectedly slow progress on the Daytona USA port, a number of members from Virtua Fighter 2 team 
were reassigned to Daytona, USA. Oh no. And in March, AM2 Research completed the Sega Graphics Library, a Saturn operating system which made it feasible to create near arcade perfect port of the Virtua Fighter 2 for Saturn. So that's awesome. By completing the Daytona USA port in April, the team took a short holiday before working on Virtua Fighter 2, and in June, AM2 gave the first public demonstration of the Saturn Virtua Fighter 2 at the Tokyo Game Show. To increase confidence in the accuracy of the port, they displayed non-playable character demos in the version uh, Lion, Shun, and Pai, and Lao running on the Saturn to prove it wasn't the first game. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was running on the Saturn at 60 FPS. Nice. I don't. TVs wouldn't have the refresh rate to really show that off, though, would they? They they would not. It would be just purely to show that the what the arcade cabinets can do, and that like, hey, look, the Saturn can totally do this if you have the hardware. Yeah. So AM2 faced problems in creating an accurate port from the Saturn. Mm-hmm. Due to the high number of moves in Virtua Fighter 2, months had to be spent on developing compression techniques in order to fit all of the moves onto a single CD. Oh jeez. In order to maintain the 60 FPS, the Saturn version could not use nearly as many polygons as the arcade version. And to mm -hmm. make that a little less apparent, the programming team used texture mapping on the characters to take advantage that of the fact the Saturn could map 16 different colors to each polygon. Fancy. Where the Model 2 arcade hardware could only map one. So, oh, really? Wow. Yeah. In addition, the polygon background objects in the arcade version were replaced with parallax scrolling play fields with selective scaling, so pretty standard nowadays. Oh, yeah. The AM2 team also used data from Virtua Fighter Remix as a reference for some of the elements, so they used the framework mm -hmm. to speed things up. Virtua Fighter 3 changed things up when it came into the arcades in 1996. So the usual inputs of movement with joystick, punch, kick, and block, they now have a fourth button, the dodge button. Oh. Dodging well increases your chances for countering your enemy's attacks. Virtua Fighter 3 was the launch title for the arcade board Model 3 from Sega, developed by Yu Suzuki's Sega AM2. It was a revolutionary game from a technical standpoint, which detailed graphics earning widespread praise. Characters' eyes appeared to track the opponent's position. Their muscles could flex and relax. The fighting arenas featured stairs and slopes. The game also introduced the ability to move in three dimensions to the series. Oh, wow. Yeah, to the series with, with, with the dodge move as well. So... Hmm. It was. It, it also seemed that they added that dodge feature late in development because of this uh, other movement. Okay. During the game's beta testing at Sega Joyopolis Arcade in Tokyo, players waited in line six to eight hours for one round of combat. Oh no! By this time, the the development was focused on fine tuning the timing of the moves and sensitivity of the buttons. Mm hmm. Yeah, that was on, that was ninety six. Jeez. There was a port for the Sega, Sega Saturn, and it was to be comparable to the arcade version, which is what they always tried to do. Mm -hmm. AM2 had to work on a 3D accelerator cartridge in order for the Saturn to run this game. Huh. It was cancelled for undisclosed reasons, though. Oh, really? Damn. That was yeah. like an expansion pack before Nintendo. I guess, yeah. According to insiders, this cartridge was being designed by Lockheed Martin, and based on the same real 3D chipset that was going to be used in their upcoming 3D accelerator cards for PCs. Oh, wow. Sega officials stated they would complete the Saturn port with or without the upgrade cartridge, and a port has never been released. Well... Alan, have you heard of ATB Lender? I have not. It's Lend R Lender, and it's... Ooh, yeah, it's pirates. It, I, I sure hope so. It's it's a program called Lender that helps you find alternative funding ideas. Not piracy, oh. but we're also not ruling it out. <laughs> so ATB will match what you can raise from the crowd. Oh, cool. So that's like better crowdfunding because they give you extra money. That's awesome. And if that does sound like something you're interested in, check out atblender.ca to learn more. That's atblender.ca.
Being one of the influential titles to bring internet connectivity to the arcade, Virtua Fighter 4 came to arcades 2001. Hmm. VFNet was started in Japan in 2001, and since then, arcade competitors E Amusement by Konami, NES CA Live by Taito and Square Enix, All Net by Sega and Bandai Namco have all made their own arcade networks. Wow. They were the first to do it for Virtual Fighter. Yeah, Virtual Fighter seems like they really blazed a lot of trails for video games. Yeah. So this game was streamlined to make the iteration more user-friendly. It also expands on a lot of old ideas, and it adds techniques. Hmm. The evasion system no longer had a dedicated button, so they got rid of the dodge button. Evades were based on response time, and were either successful or not successful. Adding to the Virtua Fighter 3 evade and throw escape option, players can now escape as many throws as they could. And Ooh, fancy. players also had more time to counter throws during an evade. And they also had a move called Sabaki, which was a move that was an attack, which also could counter some moves. Ooh. Just by reading that, it made me think of like Smash Bros where attacks have armor. Yeah, and just kind of like you got the whole psychological Yomi factor in there even more. So to make the game less random, fighting arenas were made into flat square stages again. They also made it more balanced and competitive, so that was definitely a benefit to players. Mm -hmm. They were made flat, but the walls still remained as obstacles. So these, these walls added a lot of strategy, where you could use a wall to stagger or juggle people. Mm -hmm. The different types of walls they had in the game were high and unbreakable, low breakable, low unbreakable, and open corners. Because Virtua Fighter, you can run or I don't know if you can run, but you can definitely move around them 360. Yeah, so kind of like Soul Calibur-esque. Yeah. Except it came before, so really Soul Calibur is Virtua Fighter-esque. <laughs> I, I never played it, so that's my point of reference. It seems like Soul Calibur is on its coattails, and we're like, butts, weapons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> butts and weapons. <laughs> oh, Ivy. <laughs> 2002 had the updated version called Virtua Fighter 4 Evolution. It added mm -hmm. a unique feature, which was the ability to play in a tournament quest mode where the concept was that the player was competing by traveling to various arcades. So, as opposed to role-playing as the player's chosen... Oh. As opposed oh. to just role-playing as a character. You traveled. So it's like the Pokemon trading card game, where you're, like, meta playing the game in the game. Yeah. Wow. Also, I, I was talking about Pokemon trading card game for the Game Boy. Sorry, that wasn't okay. clear. I, I actually <laughs> jumped... Yeah. You see, yeah, we br that came up a few times. I've never played it, and you said you, it was awesome. So, it I still own it. It's pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> so that mode was very popular due to the ability to buy cosmetic items and customize a character. Hmm. So you could also name your character. As, so you could show off a lot. So you're you're customizing the character that's playing the game in the game, or you're customizing no. a fighter. You customize a fighter and save it to an internet service and you tr physically travel to another arcade and sign in as you and it downloads all that stuff so oh that's awesome yeah you're basically going to other arcades and being like look at all the bangles and dangles my guy has <laughs> <laughs> yeah japanese arcades are just so much better than anything i've seen in north america yeah so many players of fighter fighting games have unique styles combination and various items allowing way different appearances and and like a new depth of uniqueness was added to this game cool so on top of that sega took the top tournament players from the arcade version captured their style of play and the ai of a player's opponents uh captured their style of play to make ai to so people could battle the ai of these high-ranking players wow that's crazy <laughs> One example was if you could play against one wolf character who's in the game, it would be very different from playing against another wolf because the actual player character AI was programmed to mimic the unique playstyle. Hmm. Pretty. That's pretty neat. Yeah, no doubt. 
Uh, in July 2001, IGN's Anthony Chow praised the graphics on the arcade game, stating it's one of the finest looking video games I've laid my eyes on and demonstrates the highest quality of visuals I've seen. Wow. It's uh, high ratings, generally 95% and higher from what I saw. Two thousand six saw the arcade release of the last main title in the franchise, Virtua Fighter Five. The yeah, original yeah. version was released on the Sega Lindbergh arcade system board. The first location test took place on November twenty six, two thousand five, leading an official release on July twelfth, two thousand six. Cool. And of course, in Japanese arcades, an ex oh, yeah. yeah an export version based on version B, because they kept versioning the arcades, released uh, arcades outside of Japan in February 2007. Oh, geez, that's a bit of a lead time. <laughs> yeah. The revised version B update was released in Japan arcades in December 2006 and was ported to PS3. The version B was also a launch title for the console's European release. Version C was released in Japanese arcades July 2007 and then was ported to Xbox 360. Hmm. So you actually had different versions on uh, each console. Interesting. So throw speed in this version was reduced and they added an instant zero frame throw reappear from Virtual Fighter 3 in guaranteed throw situations. Basically, if you dodged, you could throw someone. So to encourage a more moral style of play, Sega introduced the Clash system. Oh. When in when initiated with the right timing, an attack can be cancelled cancelled out with a throw, creating a clash, leaving both players at a zero frame advantage. Completely neutral. Hmm. So basically if someone's grabbing you, you can punch them and yeah. cancel it. Interesting. The offensive move uh, pressing punch, kick, and guard during an evade will initiate an angled forward dash. And they also added pressing puncher kick during your offensive move can initiate an attack which will slide or stagger or crumple. So there's a lot more like hard hitting ways to get to your opponent. Interesting. And these offensive moves usually launched into combos. Cool. So the Xbox 360 version introduced online support through Xbox Live. So two players from around the world could battle on the internet. Developers also su suggested the PS3 version could have been online enabled in the form of like a downloadable patch, hmm. which which was later discounted by Sega's Jay Boer, who told, "At this time, Sega has no plans to release a patch for the PS3 version of Virtua Fighter 5." Just Dang. nope. <laughs> That's rough. Version C of Virtua Fighter 5 would be used for the 360 version as they sold, and it fixed a lot of gameplay issues. So since the PS3 version was version B, at different times you can consider the 360 version uh, superior. Mm-hmm, no doubt. So different items were available for the 360 uh, in the quest mode, and in January 2008, the 360 version received an update which gave it many more improvements and changes to the online playing quest mode, so it's good to be an Xbox fan. Then. No doubt. Wow. February 18th, 2010, Sega released a trailer for the second revision called Virtua Fighter 5 Final Showdown. Ooh. The update for the Sega Lindbergh arcade system debuted at 2010 AOU Fest Expo. It Ooh. featured new character costumes and new animations. The game was officially released in Japanese arcades July 2010. <laughs> Version A of Final Showdown was released April 20th in Japanese arcades. It was announced at Gamescom 2011 that Final Showdown would be coming to PS3 on June 5th and Ooh. Xbox 360 on June 6th of 2012. Jeez. They also said this version will have complete online play for both platforms. Hmm. The game released in downloadable format, so didn't have to go to any stores. And within a week, Final Showdown surpassed Japanese sales goal expectations. Oh wow, that's always good. 
So version B of Final Showdown was also released March 25th, 2015 at Japanese arcades and removes internet functionality. Wait, what? Yeah, strange, huh? Yeah, why, why would why would they back that up like that? They sure did. Uh, that version of the game, the version B, is playable in the PS4 exclusive Yakuza 6 as one of its play spots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. The Alberta Podcast Network, powered by ATB, is proud to be a sponsor of this year's Pod Summit. It's Western Canada's podcast conference. You can join the network on May 5th at CKUA in Edmonton for a day of learning and connection making, plus some amazing giveaways. If you have a podcast, you will learn how to make it sound amazing, grow your audience, and create a show your listeners will love. And if you don't have a podcast, you'll learn how to start one, and we'll be happy to welcome you to the community. Tickets are just 150 bucks, and they're limited, so don't delay. Get yours at podsummit.com. The five main titles had a few spin-offs during their release. Due to the success of Virtua Fighter 2, a super deformed version called Virtua Fighter Kids was released for Sega Saturn <laughs> nice. and in arcades in 96. 96 also saw the release of Virtua Fighter's Mega Mix for the Sega Saturn, a crossover that pitted Virtua Fighter 2 against the cast of Fighting Vipers, as well as other characters developed in AM2 developed games. Neat. I've never heard of that. <laughs> Fighting Vipers? Yeah. I remember the 90s had a lot of fighting games where it was tons of characters I never saw then or since. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Mega Mix served as also a preview of Virtual Fighter 3 in a few ways, because that game featured a dodge ability found in Virtual Fighter 3, hmm. and the characters had their moves updated to what they would be in Virtual Fighter 3. Oh, okay, so it was like a two and a half. Yeah. They also used some music and stages from... Virtua Fighter 3. Okay, two and three quarters. <laughs> the Virtua Fighter Kids versions of Akira and Sarah are hidden playable characters in this game. Hmm. They also have a character, Siba, who was omitted from the first Virtua Fighter that appears as a hidden playable character. Neat. As you noticed, when I did Mortal Kombat, I listed all the characters every time, and uh, I learned from my mistakes, and I probably saved this episode 22 minutes. <laughs> oh, jeez. Because <laughs> the roster just keeps growing. Yeah, no doubt. So in 96, AM2 began developing a Saturn RPG based on this series, called Virtua Fighter RPG Akira's Story. Mm. So, uh, so Akira was the hero. Later, the development was moved to the Dreamcast, the Virtua Fighter connection was dropped from the base game, and it became Shenmue. Oh, okay. The game became Shenmue. Oh, wow, yeah, I've heard of that one. Yeah, and released in 99. Huh. Virtua Quest, a simplified role-playing game, it had new characters aimed at the children's market, and was released for GameCube in 2004, and PS2 in 2005. Hmm. The Virtua Fighters had their incarnations from Virtua Fighter 4. So, keeping it up to date at the time. During the late 2000s, both Sega and Namco showed interest in a possible crossover between Virtua Fighter and Tekken. This, crosso this crossover would combine all the characters and fighting styles from both games, but any other inclusions are unknown at the moment. Prior to that, the franchises were represented as Mii Brawler costumes in the Nintendo crossover Smash Bros., <laughs> which also had Ryu from Street Fighter. Nice. As I have the amiibo of him. Virtua Fighter may be remembered as a classic series, but for me, it's not the top of the list when I think of fighting games. Virtu uh, Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat definitely come up when you think fighting games. Then, yeah. then Tekken or Dead or Alive come like right after that. Yeah, Virtual Fighter was definitely like a, a niche thing where it's like if you see it in an arcade, it's like, oh yeah, that's the in the groove of fighting games. But, but it from the sounds of it, yeah. they they were pioneers. They were the first to do a lot of things. And then I guess other companies just stole that and polished. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Or I I think they kept 2D a lot longer than Virtual Fighter did. Maybe Virtual Fighter had that extra barrier of being 3D, and it intimidated us when we saw it. 
Yeah, that could be. So there is something that makes it stand far apart from its competition, and that Virtual Fighter is the only video game on permanent display at the Smithsonian National Museum of American History. Really? Influencing many other 3D fighters, in 1998, the Smithsonian Institution recognized the series for its contributions in arts and entertainment. That's that was, kind of awesome. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So, if you want to drop a knowledge bomb on someone, just say, what video games do you think are in the Smithsonian? People might go, Mario. Mm. <laughs> Good way Something to win a else. bar bet. Yeah. Except if they've heard our podcast, which all your friends should. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, if, if they haven't already, what are you doing? I'm talking to you, Craig. Oh, called out Craig. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, I do a lot of research for these, and this was actually a lot of fun because I knew pretty much zero about it, and I learned a lot, which was really cool. Yeah, same here. Just like Final Fantasy, I learned a ton. <laughs> I did not know <laughs> anything about Final Fantasy. And if you have a suggestion, and if you did not get credited for a suggestion, message us on any social media platform and I will make it right. Looking at you, Craig. Craig again. Uh, <laughs> any other suggestions? Guy. Let me know. I have a plan this year. I have them all in a list. July and December are open. If you want your suggestion in. I appreciate all of you. Yeah, you're all awesome. Thank you very much for listening. And thanks for pressing start. Hey, and it's really easy if you want to get a hold of us. Uh, we have Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We're at PSJ Show there. And if you want, you can just email us at PSJ Show at gmail.com. We also have ps2jshow.com, the best place to keep up to date with all the weird and exciting stuff that we're doing. And if you want to help us make more weird and exciting stuff, you can check out our support page, ps2jshow.com slash support. You can uh, use our Amazon affiliate link to buy yourself some stuff and uh, tell Amazon that we're cool dudes who deserve a little bit of money. We've got a ripped coupon code for ripped apparel. It is ps2jshow. You get 10% off your purchase of some cool clothes. And we also have our Patreon, where you can stay up to date with all our show notes and our State of the Podcast podcast, just like our favorite fan, Dalton. Yeah, Dalton's an awesome guy. He's on a podcast network called Podzilla 1985. He's on a few shows there, so make sure to check them out. And all music you hear in these episodes, except for the intro diddly, is courtesy of Kevin McLeod. He makes great music, so make sure to check him out. Definitely. <laughs>